This is Show Up as a Leader, a show from People Forward Network, helping you maximize your positive impact on the world by becoming your best, fully authentic self. Hey, everyone. It's Rosie. I'm super excited to have my friend Chris Johnson bring her new series, The Leadership Pause, to the show. In this series, Chris is going to unpack what it means to be fully human and access the best of who we are as leaders. And each episode is going to include stories, what she refers to as nerd science, which just is music to my ears. And she will always give a deliberate practice that we can try on at the end and apply so that we can show up as more embodied learners and leaders in our life. Take a listen. Discovering your purpose. The meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. Pablo Picasso. Building on last month's session, Discovering Purpose, we'll delve deeper today into just how to go about purpose mining the depths of your experience to actually unearth your purpose. It's especially good as we're entering a new year. We're all born into the positive energy of life with a personalized gift to offer the world. It's our work to come to terms with what that gift is, to learn about it and create space for it to flourish and grow like a beautiful plant. Our early life experiences, coupled with our unique interests, are foundational building blocks for where our life's energies will be played out. We're born into, grow up with, and we're all socialized into our first family. Don't we know it? A natural outcome of growing up in that first family includes learning, adopting, and embodying the beliefs and values of our first family and later those of our community. And while we can't not do this, because we all grew up somewhere, the process of our own inner listening can become faint, and we can forget who we are. It's in fact rare that people take the time to step back and reflect on their personal values or their purpose in life. Many of us, you won't be surprised to know, actually live our entire lives with a borrowed set of standards, beliefs, and values that we inherited from our parents, from our community, etc., and that they're invisible to us until we begin to get curious about what matters most to us, especially important for conscious leadership. Our early life shaping either tends to dull or animate our energy, setting us on a path toward finding and living into our unique purpose or not. The great teacher Krishnamurti wrote, quote, without passion, life becomes empty, shallow, and without much meaning, end quote. He understood that we're drawn to what impassions us. Experiencing our own inner spark of life can transform our raw experiences, yes, think back to childhood, to provide the light of awareness that we need to see our path to purpose with clarity. So consider those activities in your life today that you absolutely love to do. What sort of things put you into the flow and make you lose track of time? What activities energize you the most? You know, as kids, we're naturally drawn to activities that engaged and excited us. And of course, a kid's job is to play and play, using their imagination, exploring and learning in the process. They dream up so many different futures, right? You did too. One day it's being a baseball player, the next day it's a doctor, a fireman, a teacher, or a scientist. The lure of the woods, where my sister and I clomped through the creek, and the discovery of things like tiny irises by the side of a path next to a growth of morals growing under a crumbling heap of wood, all of that excited me, moved me, and got me really curious about the amazing wonders of nature. To allow the excitement of what is, is to shape us in what grows our passions. To keep learning, again, especially important for conscious leaders today, to keep learning requires intentional deep listening at multiple levels for what makes you feel the most alive, energized, and impassioned. Passion is the juicy combination of what you love, what you're drawn to, and what you care about. Passion is what puts you into flow and energizes you. 
So let me tell you a story today. Each school day when I was a kid, my sister Shauna and I walked a quarter mile down the lane, we lived down the country, to catch the yellow school bus. Most of the time, I loved those walks and our easy companionship as we waited for the bus to roll into our little country valley. On days when it was windy or cold, I'd snuggle up with my friend, the big burr oak tree, who'd protect and keep me warm, his couple hundred year old, amazing burr oak tree. It was in those moments, snuggled up by the tree, that I first began to wonder, how'd they all get here? Why us, anyway? What are we supposed to do? Does somebody tell us? How will I know what to do with my life? And for that matter, when will I know? Yeah, this notion of purpose can start really early, yes? With a child's curiosity. So you might be asking, well, so how do I go about exploring purpose, Chris? Is it really relevant to today's world, especially at work? Now, I'll start with that second question first. It's absolutely necessary, in my opinion, especially today, since we're hearing more about purpose-driven businesses, finding your purpose, committing to your purpose, etc. Yep, it's really important. And there are many potential ways to explore your purpose. I shared questions last month, and you can certainly build on those. However, similar to the practice of mindfulness, where it can often be perceived as a bit heavy and all too serious of a practice, exploring purpose can feel hefty too, a bit like your life depends on it, because actually it does. But there's an alternative to applying rigorous, heavy analysis to identify, quantify, and zero in on the one right thing that's your purpose, though that may actually work for some people. Being on purpose, your life does depend on it, yet not so much. Sounds like a zeni koan, right? Your purpose is actually fundamental and sacred even. That's the does part, does depend on it, and easily joyfully discoverable, though that's the not so much part. Practicing discovering purpose is more about pausing and allowing and playing, like I did hugging that sturdy burr oak tree to open space for personal wondering and musing, to allow the time and space to kind of explore all those questions that arise in you. With time and space to explore, get curious and experiment, you'll discover your unique purpose, the one that reflects the authenticity of your life path, distinct from other people or the roles that you hold. And if you've already done some work around purpose, go at it again, because it's a journey and we can learn each time we journey up and down the path. Because you're on a path through life, no matter how old you are, where you reside, or actually what you're currently up to, pausing to noodle on questions of purpose can actually be light, fun, and tap into the best of who you are. And because you're on a path through life, no matter how old you are, or where you reside, or what you're currently up to, pausing to noodle on questions of purpose can be light, fun, and tap into the best of you right where you already are. I've identified three primary areas to explore. These include your gifts, your passions, and your contributions. Imagine them as like three interlocking circles with that sweet spot right in the middle. What are your unique gifts? Those that not only come naturally to you, but that you really enjoy doing. Other people can probably see them. And rather than depleting your energy, Expressing your gifts brings you energy. You likely lose track of time when you're engaged in using these gifts. What rouses your passion? In other words, if your security needs, you know, the roof over your head, the money to cover basic expenses, enough food to eat, which we have today, if all of those were already not a factor because they're already taken care of, what would you want to spend your time doing? What do you want to do? What would you want to use your life's energy to explore, experience, or accomplish? What values and experiences stand out to you as important? Can you let yourself feel into them? Bring them to mind. And as you do, notice how your body responds. How is your energy? 
as you do this, your non-negotiables, things that are absolutely essential to you, will become more obvious too. What about your contributions? As you reflect, what's the big and little contributions that you have made and that you make every day? Contributions to your family, your community, your colleagues at work. As you give yourself permission to explore and play around with these questions, you'll circle in and ultimately land on your purpose. It may take a little while, but that's all okay. It's a great exploration, a great adventure. And when you do get closer or actually land on your purpose, my guess is that you'll notice you have an even increased sense of energy and passion. You'll be able to kind of figure out like, what's the next right action I'm gonna take? to actually put this purpose to better use. Back in my rudimentary child's mind, when I walked down the driveway to that big oak tree waiting for the bus, I knew I wanted to help people have better conversations. And that was clear to me even then. There was a lot of arguing at home. I didn't like the conflict. I figured there was, must be a better way to have a conversation. And by later in grade school, my purpose showed up as me being kind to other kids and adults at school, especially when people were at odds. Later in high school, it involved me initiating conversations with people who had differing experiences and points of view and doing that on purpose, just to see how people thought. In my career, and even up to today, it includes both of those and convening conversations that would certainly be described as tricky at best, painful at worst. Seek your own thread by looking back on your life. What keeps showing up for you? What feels essential? Remember that ultimately purpose is a statement about the difference you're trying to make in the world by how you want to show up. As I mentioned before, only you can suss out and develop your personal purpose. In the practice this month, I'll offer you a way to capture all your reflections and write out your purpose in a statement that you can roll off your tongue so that when you do, you can kind of repeat it like a mantra as a guiding North Star for in your day to day. Acting on our purpose has benefits way far beyond our own fulfillment because purpose is adaptive in an evolutionary sense. And it not only helps us, but it helps those in our species to survive too. So think about all those kids in the neighborhood, your colleagues at work. So here's the practice for this month. And again, what you'll want to do is find 20 to 30 minutes where you can intentionally pause and reflect on the following questions. You might like that notebook by you again so you can record whatever comes up for you. Start by attending to your breath with a pause. Then on purpose, take three to five deep breaths and extend out your exhalation. It triggers that parasympathetic nervous system so we chill. And then... Reflect on the following questions here, writing them out with your full open-heartedness. Listen to what's up as you answer them and make notes as useful to you. Consider if you lived your purpose and were making the difference that you want to make, what would that look like in a year? What would it look like in three to five years? How will you know you're on purpose in your life? Consider your gifts. Number one, list those things out that you excel at that's as easy as breathing. List those guys out. Number two, of those, what are the things that you find easy, even effortless? Number three, what would or do other people say that you're really gifted at? Then, consider your passions. List out those things that you absolutely love to do those activities that put you into flow and make you lose a track of time to become absorbed in a flow state. And then write out what activities energize you. What things would you even pay to do? Those fit up under passion. And then lastly, consider your contributions. What are the specific ways that you can make a difference, either that you have made or you'd like to make, that are very meaningful to you? What acts of helping or service leave you feeling the most satisfied? What kinds of contribution bring you the greatest fulfillment in life? 
And as you write all these down, again, imagining those intersecting circles of influence, you might even draw those intersecting circles in your notebook, list all the activities you do that intersect your gifts, passions, and your contributions. And here's the last guy. How would you complete this sentence, stem or fill in the blank? I use my gifts of this and that and this to pursue my passions of this and that and make a difference by doing X. As Frederick Beekner has said, the place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. I'm Dr. Chris, and I'm interested to know what opens up for you as you continue your exploration of purpose. This whole process of leadership is one of taking ourselves on, really on, turning inward, and we're just scratching the surface here with this work. So I'd say take a pause, let yourself feel whatever's there. There's so much more to this topic and all these others that show up in my book, The Leadership Pause. You can find it over on Amazon or at your favorite bookseller. So as we sign off today, remember who you are. Remember that when we're attuned to the moment at hand, present to whatever it holds, we can make our best contribution. This is power. Have a great day. I'm Rosie Ward, and this is Show Up as a Leader. To learn more, head over to peopleforwardnetwork.com and, of course, hit that follow button.